All right. Well, welcome everybody to today's session of Tuesdays for Climate, how to become a financially sustainable organization. I'm very glad to welcome you all here. My name is Katarina Bouchard. I am from SCAN, the Scottish Communities Climate Action Network. And we are focusing today on how to become a financially sustainable organization in terms of income generating uh, activities. And we have a guest speaker from the Scottish Community Alliance, Amanda Cornish, with us here today. So welcome to you, Amanda. Thank you. And uh, I would ask you to maybe just introduce yourself briefly and yeah, then we can move on to for you to present how you do that, um, how you what you can how what you can help us with in terms of how to become a sustainable um, organization, community organization or um, organizations that have community related activities. Um, because often it's of course a challenge to um, to 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 sustain your activities because um, there's only so much you can do as, as a volunteer, um, which is of course a lot of what is being done in, in community organizations is a lot of volunteer input. Um, but in order to sustain activities, there is money is necessary, necessary for certain things. Let it be even just to, to rent a space where you can do activities, um, cater for people when they come to events, whatever it may be. But um, you will at some point need some kind of um, income for in order to run any activity that you might be doing. So, of course, one one common way is to um, to just look for grant funding from private organizations, public funding in order to sustain your activities as an organization. Um, but the uh, another opportunity and another possibility is um, to actually just uh, look for income generating opportunities. That could be anything from like, you know, renting out spaces that you have available um, for other organizations or activities um, or running a cafe, um, selling any items you may have or just um, running events and conferences, etc. And just taking a, um, um, an entrance fee for that. Um, so there's many opportunities that, uh, that, that are available and in order to generate an income for the organization. And of course, the big, big advantage for that type of activity is that as opposed to grant funding, you do not need to um, use that funding for specific purposes and you can use that funding um, in order to also cover some um, what's called the core costs, you know, some staff costs, you know, premises, rent, heating, all of these things that normally grant funding does not cover. It's rare and it's becoming ever rarer. And um, there's more and more organizations that say we do not want to fund that. And so organizations are often stuck in, in this position that they have these costs. They have staff that need to run uh, activities. Um, they have, of course, you know, office play, uh, spaces or they have any community spaces that they might use for their activities. Um, but um, but funders, grant funders often don't want to finance that. So here's where where other income generating opportunities come in. And um, Amanda's going to present us one tool to help you get towards that um, income generating uh, organization um, and it's called the Accelerate program which the Scottish Community Alliance is running. Yeah. Now Amanda you are much more of an expert on this than I am so I'm going to um, pass the, give the floor to you so you can explain to us what this is about and how it works and how it can benefit um, community organizations um, that are you know that are currently thinking oh how can we just become a little bit more easy on, on our income because um, you know, applying for funding is a big effort all the time as well. And um, and how can we just sort of balance out and diversify maybe also the, the income that we have as an organization. So Amanda, please tell us, tell us all about it. Okay, just introduce thank you. yourself briefly and then um, if you can, if you can just present um, how the Accelerate program works, which um, as a community organization, um, all members of SCAN can access, yeah. um, then um, that will be fantastic. And I think you will also um, tell us about some case studies, so some examples of where it's been done, successfully done, and, and so how it can function in practice so that people on the call can get an idea of what, um, what this entails and how it can work in practice. 
And once we've done that, um, we'll open the floor to any questions, discussion, any ideas that um, everyone on the call has, um, uh, what you would like to do and uh, what you maybe are doing already. So let's just exchange a little bit on, on everyone's experience um, on, on doing activities that, that may generate some kind of income and maybe where you got stuck. And this is <laughs> your opportunity and chance to, um, to ask questions um, on the topic um, to Amanda, um, to myself as well, and anyone who's on the call and who might be helpful and have some experience. So Amanda, I'll pass the floor to you. And I'll put on, I think you got the presentation, so I'll put that on. If okay. anyone has any um, sort of problems or any questions, you can also put um, put it in a chat. We've got a chat window there, so any issues, just just put it in the chat for now. And later on, um, very you're very welcome to talk. I'm just muting everyone now so that we can hear Ma Amanda properly. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, my name is Amanda Cornish, and I work for the Scottish Community Alliance, of which Scan is a member. And I help manage the Accelerate programme, which is a partnership between the Scottish Community Alliance and Community Enterprise. If you could go to the next, the next slide again. I'd like to say if anybody has any questions while I'm talking, um, please just interrupt um, as, um, so that we can keep the thing alive and I'm not just talking at you. Um, it's a partnership, as I said before, between the Scottish Community Alliance and community enterprise. It's funded by the Scottish Government, uh, who works with Scottish Community Alliance. And community enterprise are a, um, a development organisation, a uh, consultancy if you like, which is, does a lot of work through community groups. So it's well grounded in the ethos and the culture of community organisations. Um, the next slide, please. Um, what's Accelerate? It's a bespoke program, so in other words it's not an off-the-shelf program, of enterprise support and it can involve mentoring, capacity building and, and guidance. One of the issues of organisations, um, community organisations that I'm really aware of, is a lack of capacity. So people know what they need to do, they know what they want to do, but often they actually don't have capacity to do it. And this program, if you like, feeds into that and provides the capacity for certain activities to take place. It's to assist grant and service level agreement dependent community and third sector organisations to become sustainable. Katharina has mentioned that grants are definitely um, drying up, that kind of funding that we've been accustomed to coming through government, um, coming through Scottish Government, local authorities, etc. Agreements with local authorities, their budgets are drying up. So organisations, community organisations, do have to look at other ways of funding themselves and becoming more self-sufficient. Um, the next... It was identified by the Scottish Community Alliance that there is a gap so there's quite a lot of support for organisations which are already successfully trading. So there's Just Enterprise, which I'm sure you've heard about, there's First, uh, first, first Port, um, Partnerships for Procurement. So there's quite a lot of support, specialist support for organisations which are trading. But many organisations, community organisations, struggle actually to get to that stage, to qualify for that kind of support within that just enterprise framework. So although smaller organisations may have the potential, they need help to get to that stage, to get to the stage where they can take advantage of these other funding opportunities. And that's what the Accelerate programme is about. So it's actually aimed at organisations which are not yet trading significantly, but know that they need to get to that stage. If you could um, go to the next um, slide, please. It's open to organisations which have or are happy to build a, a relationship with um, a community-based network. And I know that SCAN's membership, its constituency, are very much 
in that area. So I don't think that's um, going to be an issue with any of SCAN's um, um, communities or their constituents. Um, it's a very simple process. If you've ever filled up any of the larger grant applications, you know that they are <coughs> significant in terms of taking up your resources. So all we're looking for is contact details. In other words, who we, who we should be talking to, the organization and contact details like email and telephone, etc. We need the confirmation that it has a constitution and a bank account. So in other words, we're not going to deal with organizations that haven't at least got these two fundamentals in place. We would need to have an endorsement by a community network and it would be somebody like SCAN. So the point of this is not actually if you look about quality control. So SCAN's not saying, yes, you know, these are good people. What I need to know <coughs> is that, they, that you exist that you're a proper job organization. So I need a third party to endorse that. Um, I often give the example, I can't know, I can't know when I'm looking at applications, every community group in Scotland. My worry is um, that, you know, there's a man sitting in his attic or a woman sitting in his attic who, if you like, has put on the identity, taken up the identity of a community group. So I just need a third party that's going to say, yep, that's okay. We know these people, they're very fighting. Also the reason for inquiry, <coughs> excuse me, again, it's not a prompt. We're not asking you any kind of detail. What we're asking you is the inquiry, what your reason is. And it's really just a paragraph because we've just bought something and we have a new asset, whatever it might be. We want to put, um, put together a community cafe, anything like that. Doesn't have to be a long description. I just need to know. I have had one inquiry which actually didn't have any reason of why they wanted to become involved in the project, which I thought was interesting. And when I wrote back and said, can you give me the reason why you want to be involved in the program? I didn't get a response. So they seemed just to want to go through the program because it's a good thing to do rather with an end objective. So I do need a reason why you want to be involved. Um, the next one, please. What's the process? What actually happens? And there are two levels to this. One is, um, the first stage is, is carried out by community enterprise and it is baseline information and an initial health check and identifies the strengths and aspirations and also interrogates that there is an understanding of the challenges. So in detail of level, level one, um, next slide um, please, Katharina. It's looking at, do you have governance in place in relation to trading? A lot of it's about, have you got these things in place with the objective of trading? Does the board understand their legal roles and responsibilities? Do you actually have a finance system up in place that would be able to cope with a trading situation? Is your team up for it? Is the board up for it? Are your um, volunteers and staff up for it? Do you have outside partners? Do you have a network outside of your own organisation? So in other words, you're not an isolated group. And do you know what impact you'd like to make? In other words, what you would like to do. This is very straightforward stuff. What I'd like to say is it's not a, a tick box. It's, you don't have, it's not a test that you have to pass. What it's about is finding out, oh, your financial system probably is in place to do, to, to do what you are just now, to look after your needs just now, but might, might not be in a place to, um, to handle trading. So it's not a, a pass and fail exercise. It's about identifying what needs to happen, what needs to be improved, what's okay to go on to a trading situation. Um, next slide, um, please, Katrina. So out of that um, health plan or, or, or health check, there comes um, it informs an action plan. So based on what you want to do, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, what you need to develop, 
out of that will come an action plan. It might be market research. It might be developing a business plan. It can involve any number of things, and it's absolutely informed by that first level one, that, that health check. So again, what I'm trying to say, it is bespoke. It's not pulled off the shelf. It's not one size fits all. It may actually be after level one that the organization decides not to progress. No, we're not actually ready for this. This is not what we want to do. And that's very useful in itself. So you don't get sort of 80% down the, down the line and think, you know what, this isn't what we should be doing. It may also involve very technical advice, say on corporate governments, on intellectual property, on VAT. So some of it might be um, more generic, marketing plans, business plans, some of it might be very specialist and specific. An example was an organization that wanted to become a wedding center to do marriages, etc. And they would then have to um, be good at event management, which is a skill on itself. So they wanted training in event management. That's an example of a very specific requirement or a very specific need. Again, very specific delivery. Um, next slide, please. Ah, come to the end. Um, that's really uh, talking about what it's for, why it exists. It's about filling this um, funding gap and also um, the actual process. I've also got some um, case studies which give live examples of how the Accelerate program was used, which, um, Katrina, I don't know if you're able to. Yeah, I'm going to pull, pull those up for you. Um, I've got the first one here. Okay. Can everyone see? Can you see that? I think so. This is um, very significant. It's obviously an, an island situation, the Isle of Carrera, and it was very much about infrastructure. So it's very, very specific. Um, they needed um, appropriate equipment. This is actually to do with um, private water supplies, etc., and septic tanks. It is, again, we're talking about a very bespoke situation. They're on an island and they have to be very self-sufficient in those, in those aspects. So they wanted to be self-sufficient. They were paying a lot to the mainland to do this work for them. But what they knew they needed to get um, appropriate equipment. What they didn't have was a business plan on which to base their enterprise, on which to base their funding. So there was very little point in getting this capsule equipment in and then not having the support planning around it. So um, they, um, the Accelerate program developed a focused business plan on this very specific problem. And as you can see, they worked with the trust. This is not something that is done to you. It has to be in collaboration. And also it brought in partners such as CalMac. Again, very, very specific situation here, an island situation. And so um, these outside organizations such as CalMac have to be included in the process. Um, each of our case studies also has an endorsement from the organization. And again, they helped, it says they helped identify all the things they hadn't thought of. So it's another set of eyes, another set of brains going, but have you thought of? And that's based on the experience of community enterprise of working in this kind of business for so many years. And um, it's a very, it's an example of a very, very specific need. Um, next one, please, um, Katrina. Yeah. Got Granton Castle Walled Garden, that's in Edinburgh. This is Granton, yeah, Castle Walled Garden. This is um, an example of when an organization um, gets access to a property. Sometimes it's a building, sometimes it's a piece of land. In this context, it was a piece of land, and they were wanting to produce products such as jams and chutneys. And one of the very specific, I talked in my presentation, you might need very specific um, help and um, support. And this was in the area of intellectual property. Uh, and again, it was about also doing some market research, etc. Um, and so it's very specific 
around um, legal requirements, um, intellectual property, and this was an organization that actually they were not incorporated and it helped them to have that legal support to achieve incorporation. So again, it's, it's quite specific. This organization had very specific requirements. It, they were helped with very specific and specialized support. Um, and they, they talk then about they got speedy support at a crucial time. I would also like to say the timelines on this program are short, they're not long. So um, you'd be able to achieve something if, if it was within your own comfortable timeline within three to six months. So it's not something that drags on forever. And it's very specific uh, and it's very, it's, it's time limited. So the whole thing from, from saying that you're interested in the program to achieving, some, achieving an outcome could be three to six months. So it's not something that goes on forever and takes up loads of resources. Um, next one, please. Got a third case study. Um, again, I talked about um, sometimes, most often people come to the Accelerate program because there's actually a requirement. Sometimes it's um, land, sometimes it's a building, taking ownership of land or building. And in this case, it was an old school in a remote rural area. And uh, it was an organization that was run informally using volunteers and they needed to go to the next step. And they wanted to commercialize a drop-in cafe that was going to be run by volunteers. Um, they were already doing this and they wanted to commercialize it. So that's another example of an organization that might be doing something in a slightly um, cottage industry way, and they know they need to go to the next, the next stage. So again, it was about um, market research. It was about putting together a business plan and also cash flow projections, which in something like a cafe is quite important because you can actually run out of cash in order to make, buy your supplies, etc. So it's, that's quite a, uh, a significant and it's quite a technical thing to ask for, but absolutely required if you're going into this kind of cash um, turnover that a cafe involves. You need to bring in the cash to buy your supplies to sell, etc. Um, and again, they felt that um, the endorsement indicates that they were happy with the result and well supported and listened to three out through um, listened to three out. I think that's a really important aspect. This is not I keep saying this. It's not done to you. Um, it's it's a it's a two way process. Um, and the business plan reflected what their needs and aspirations were. So I think these um, three case studies indicate that it's um, not a off-the-shelf product. It is tailor-made to the requirements and that it's done with the organization and not to the organization. Mm. That's me. Thank you so much for that, Amanda. That I think was a really good overview of uh, the Accelerate program and um, how it can help community organizations to take that next step from just being a community-led organization that tries to do something good and charitable often in, in their local community to actually becoming um, going towards a social enterprise model and um, and becoming a um, an organization that yeah generates income to either complement or completely become um, sort of social enterprise um, complement volunteering activities that they might do or, or any sort of just social and charitable um, activities um, with some additional income. so after hearing all of that See this, there's quite a few people on the call. I would be really curious and keen to hear who you all are and what organizations you come from, if you are coming from an organization, and um, where you are on your journey. Like, why are you here basically today? Are you interested in just hearing um, how can things be done? Are you already on your journey towards um, trading? Are you a grant um, dependent organization? What's, what's your story? Um, so, Maybe we can go round and whoever wants to speak um, can just give me a sign and um, I'll un unmute you or you can unmute yourselves. Um, and whoever, I'm not going to force everyone to speak, maybe if they, if they don't want to, um, but it would be great to hear from, from at least a few of you 
um, you know, what's, what's your story? And um, would the Accelerate program be something that you would be considering? Or are you already far beyond that? And you can share your experience of how you trade. Um, what's, what, where are you coming from? Where are you going? And going to start. Just raise your hand if you can. And if those that don't have a video on, um, you will have to just unmute yourselves and say something. I see a smiling John Wood. Uh -huh. Would you like to just say who you are and why are you here? What's what's interested you about the, the webinar today? Can, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you fine. You can hear me. Okay, good. Well, I'm really sorry, first of all, that I, I only managed to join the call really late uh, today for various technical reasons and other reasons. And so I missed a lot of the presentation, but I can tell you where we are and um uh, and why i'm interested and why we're interested so we're all, we're in pull you this is a group which is quite close actually to that last one last case study that you uh geographically close to the people you were referring to in the last case study there the westerlock you trust and we're up the road from them uh, and uh, i think their um experience is one of the things that's inspired us so the situation here is that we've got um a village shop and post office uh, that is up for sale. It's a viable business, uh, but it's really important for the community here. Uh, and um, we're keen to uh, take it on as a community enterprise uh, because we feel that um, it's been on the market for about two years now uh, and uh, it's not attracted much interest. Uh, and obviously the present owner needs to retire and uh, needs to sell. So you know, we're concerned, obviously, that a private buyer might buy it up and either close it down altogether or uh, turn it into a different kind of uh, shop that doesn't benefit the community or something like that. Now, it's a hub at the moment, really important for us. So we're really at an early stage. We've, we've, got a, we, we've, we've had public meeting. We, we've got the community support. There's a working group been set up to uh, take this forward. And at the moment, really, we, we, there's two, two main needs uh, that we have. One is that we need to, um, uh, well, we need, first of all, really, before we go any further, we need to get um, a valuation and a, a proper um, a survey done of the, of the business and the property so that, uh, so that we know where we're going. I mean, if it's going to be uh, a non-starter, then it's as well for us to be aware of that from the beginning before, uh, before we start trying to incorporate ourselves or whatever it might be. So uh, that's kind of the first step. And, and I suppose really uh, that's what we're hoping to seek for some funding towards something like that, just to get us off the ground. Uh, I don't know what sort of cost we'd be talking about, but, um, but a standard sort of survey really of the business. Uh, I've already got, um, I mean, I've been in negotiations with the present owner already. I've already got uh, details of the accounts and so on. And, you know, we, 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 think it's, we think it looks a, a very viable proposition. So, but uh, we need that uh, up-to-date uh, valuation. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. Very early days with this project. Uh, but I and uh, the other people on the, on the group have all had quite a lot of experience with uh, community um, enterprises uh, of various kinds in the past. I was one of the founders of Transition Black Isle, for example. And uh, we've had other people um, who also have, have been involved. I've been involved in other direct, other, um, other community enterprises too. So uh, we've got some experience to go on. We're looking for some support and some help. Uh, we have also got some, uh, we've been in touch with the, uh, there's a Highland Island Enterprise um, community, uh, what's it called? Social Enterprise Academy project going on. That is, um, that, that we've been in touch with them. And uh, I'm hoping we're going to get some good training and, and, and some good uh, advice from them. Um, there's also the Plunkett Foundation. We've been in touch with them. Uh, so, uh, but, you know, obviously we're keen for any support we can get uh, from whatever source. And, uh, and so I'm hoping that uh, maybe you two will be able to help us. Thank you. Thank well, you John, for sharing that. Yeah, Amanda. You, John, that, that, that sounds uh, a, 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 pro, a, a project that would be absolutely, um, would benefit from the um, Accelerate programme in that you're at the early stages and um, it, it just sounds ideal. So I would suggest that you put in an inquiry 
when you're ready to. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that, John. Really interesting project as well. And I think sort of in in more rural communities, probably one that is also quite quite common, you know, that the community comes together and tries to save a community asset and tries to um, preserve something. I've, I've seen it in quite a few rural communities across Scotland. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. And well, great to see that there's another real life example, potential example of, of how the Accelerate program can work and really help and hopefully bring you forward. Really curious to see, you know, if and how you move forward as well. And if you can keep us updated with that, that would be really good. Right, thank you for the support. Thank you. <laughs> no from there. Thank you, John. Um, is there anyone who would like to go next, raise your hand or, or make yourself known? There's Alex with a video. Hi. Please go ahead, Alex. Hi. Uh, so I'm with Shrub Cooperative in Edinburgh. So we have got some uh, projects which generate revenue already, but we are still really heavily grant dependent. Um, so 80 to 90 percent of all of our funding comes from grants. Uh, we have all of those grant funds are in April. So we're in quite a a stressful place at the moment waiting for the next round of funding so generating revenue is uh, kind of on the radar at the moment and um, there are there are quite a lot of premises we have which we're renting for the projects which aren't going to be uh, aren't being fully utilized which we could probably find things that we could do better with them uh, it is something we've tried to look at before we don't really have the resources to put behind it to build it into a proper business um, there, we do have a cafe as well. Um, there's all kinds of little projects all over the place, which could probably, a number of them could benefit from, from some proper business support. Um, Sorry, so Alex, can you just, um, I didn't catch it, like, what's your main activity? What do you do? Okay, so there's, it's, it's kind of a diverse place. <laughs> it's kind of hard to say what the main thing is. So we have um, uh, the swap shop, like the Zero Waste Hub in Edinburgh contains a swap shop, which has, uh, it's kind of like a charity shop, but the main objective is to, uh, save carbon by uh, promoting reuse of clothing and other household items. Um, we, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. And we have a, a cafe, there's the food sharing hub as well, which is diverting food waste, um, and the food sharing network, which does food waste as well, but in a more um, dispersed around the community way. Um, we have workshops, uh, we have a bike hub as well, which is uh, teaching people how to maintain bikes. Um, and uh, teaching active cycling, active travel, and that kind of thing. So there's a, a lot of different things going on, um, but most of them don't really generate that much revenue. So they are super grant dependent, um, and with the funding coming to an end, and there's always that threat of funding running out, trying to generate more revenue is, is always something we're looking to try and do. Uh, and there are some other couple bigger projects coming down the um, pipeline as well, which could do some support. Like we have a, a rental project for electronic goods that we're interested in running as well. So one of the things I'm interested in is how uh, how big a project are you interested in supporting? Like, is there a, an upper limit for the size of the project that you'd want to help out with? No, it, do, it really doesn't work that way in terms of size of project. Um, I think it's more about what stage you're at in the process and what help you need. So it's not really about the, the size or the value of the project. It's about where you are in the process and whether you can benefit um, from the Accelerate program. The only would, thing I would say as a sort of caveat to what you've just described, but we'd have to go into that in a bit more detail probably offline, is how much you're actually trading. It looks like you have quite a few um, enterprises, shall we say, in a cafe and a swap shop, etc. And probably we'd need to talk about that as to how much you're actually trading because the program isn't for organizations that are significantly trading it's for those that aren't and need to get to that stage so you know I'm a bit ambivalent about how much of information I can give to you but it's certainly not about the size of the project it's about where you are in the journey so is that sort of a, a total amount of trading in just pounds or is it like a proportion that you're interested in? It's probably in value. It's probably in pounds. Mm -hmm. Is there a, do you know what the limit is? No, there's not a limit. Again, I, I know, I, I know I sound, I'm sort of wishy-washy, but there's, I can't say, right, so much per year, that's it. But if it sounds like it's, um, 
substantial and you know substantial if, if it sounds like it's a, a substantial part of your revenue that your mm -hmm. trading revenue is a substantial part of that of your total annual revenue then probably you wouldn't qualify but this is probably a discussion that might be um, better off offline off for instance there are organizations that have in the past had significant trading and that doesn't exist anymore mm. um, and so we would say that that trading is legacy it might even show up in the current accounts but if you like it's a legacy trading situation and it's not going to be there next year so we treat that as an organization that wasn't trading so, sorry can i just chip in with a, a question on that as well can you like define what substantial would be in terms of a percentage of income? I'm, I'm, you mean, I'm, I'm really sorry, I'm not going to give a... Um, we have, maybe we should, but we haven't set a figure. We haven't said if, you, if it's over 10 grand or over 5 grand. Um, it's probably something we need to discuss on a case-by-case basis. I said at the beginning, this is not an off-the-shelf um, program. It is a, a bespoke program. And so in terms of um, when you put in a, um, a form, a, a, you know, interest form, we, we would have a conversation with you after that. Somebody would phone you and have a conversation just about where you are. So again, um, I'm, I'm, I am prevaricating a bit, but the point being, it's not an off the shelf. So it's, it, it's not a shelf, off the shelf program. Somebody, if you were put in, in an inquiry, which you honestly would take you five minutes to do, somebody would phone you and discuss these aspects with you and see if you qualify or not. But it wouldn't be a waste of time putting in an inquiry because it would honestly take you five minutes to do that form. So it's not like you'd, you'd invest a load of time and a load yeah. of effort putting in an application and then we would go, <laughs> you don't qualify. Yes. Our inquiry form is really simple to do, and yeah. then you could have a conversation, <laughs> or you could have a conversation before that about you know about where you are in terms of income generation. Okay, Susie, you had another question. I think which you put in the chat. Um, do you want to just say it yourself, or do you want me to read it out for you, whichever you prefer? No, my thank you, Katharina. My other question was does. So you're working with consultants, um, community enterprise. Does the program, does it have to be community enterprise or would it, is it possible to choose a different consultant? If you like the contract between the Scottish Government, the Scottish Community Alliance is with community enterprise. So it's there's something, and I have had a couple of um, situations where there's something very specific um, very specialized, then yes, um, we would source or, or the client would source another consultant. But the co it, it, it's just one of these things, you know, you get the funding for, you're contracted to deliver ah, okay. in a certain situation and, and, and deliver certain things. And that is the agreement with the Scottish Government. Um, they are a very good consultancy, but it would be quite difficult for us if all the clients source their own consultant it would it would actually be quite a complicated process so at the moment it's um it, it, it's um community enterprise okay well thank you for answering that question um is there anyone else who would like to share their story and and see where they are we've got sally ryan pam sarah perhaps any of you would like to say something If you just unmute yourself if I haven't unmuted you. Oh. Hi, Sally. Oh, even a video. Nice to see Hi you. Hi there. How are you doing? I'm uh, Sally from Friends of the River Kelvin in Glasgow. We're a, a charity at the moment, unincorporated, but have just submitted in the last two months um, an application to change to SKIO. And we've been about, around for about 26 years mostly um, surviving on our own fundraising activities, very little grant funding. Uh, we're now looking at a point where we are going to hopefully get a community asset transfer on a building that we've um, 
inhabited and looked after since about 1998. And last year, um, with some legacy funding um, from former members, who which which allowed us to go through quite a lot of facilitated uh, workshops, were completely volunteer led at this stage, and um, I think some of that information that came out of the workshops was really about looking at potentially starting more formal trading activities. We've done ad hoc things like venue hire and events and weddings and different things like that in and around because we've got this beautiful little um, building beside the River Kelvin in Glasgow. So um, we are just starting to recruit a new board um, with the skill that will hopefully have some of the uh, committee members who want to stay on in this new sort of uh, stage and and then also some different um, uh, and new um, board members who have specific skills specifically around trade and building management and that kind of thing. We work with a lot of different partners so Keep Scotland beautiful local bike projects, um, lots of schools. One of our biggest problems is capacity because we are volunteers so we get pulled into our, our other worlds and our other lives um, and one of the biggest things that came out of the stakeholder engagement was looking at the potential to develop a small community cafe uh, and hoping that we could make that as close to zero waste as possible which would fit with our aims and objectives of the, um, of the charity. So really using that as a revenue generator um, to um, sustain our um, other projects which we can't really put a, co a cost or cost to. We engage with lots of schools locally, they tend not to have budgets for the type of uh, projects that uh, we run with them. So we're looking, we're looking at that. So that would be why I'd be very interested in looking at Accelerate. I myself come from a social enterprise um, background. I worked with First Port for a number of years, but uh, like you were saying, Amanda, we don't fit that kind of um, profile for yeah. an organisation like First Port. So there are a number of us that um, can take part from a committee and volunteers' point of view who would like to um, look at sort of training and capacity building. I think accelerate is. Those, um, well, it certainly sounds as though your organisation would qualify. Again, you're, you're on that journey and you've just become a CEO, CEO and you're putting in a new board, recruiting a new board. So it sounds like you're at a good place to have that um, Accelerate programme uh, be introduced to your organisation. Great, thank you. And looking at the sort of community asset transfer part of it, I think you know that that trading that trading aspect is key because we need to show in a business plan that we can bring in a revenue to sustain and maintain that building going forward yeah uh, it needs some substantial renovation to bring it up to a point where it would be as let's just say it's got lots of quirks and we always need lots of people on site if another community group is going to use it or that kind of thing so um we've recently had uh level three survey done on it, some art engagement with architecture. Scottish Water have given us a small amount of funding because they're doing a big project nearby. So we're reaching out to lots of different partners, but certainly knowing how much the funding landscape has changed, um, we need to have a trading aspect um, just to, to continue looking after such an asset, I think. Uh, but also don't want to just become custodians of a building because that takes away from the aims and ambitions of what we're actually trying to do, which is climate change resilience, um, raise awareness of the blue space environment and lots of health and wellbeing projects that we run. That's good. I, I, I certainly think, um, to repeat myself, I think you are... Um, ideally situated to take advantage of the programme, um, the Accelerate programme. Great, work on applications. And, and particularly around, as said before, uh, often people's requirement for 
that kind of support is when they have um, taken ownership of a building or something like that and, and, or a piece of land or a building um, and how how to take it forward sustainably um, and some of the, what sometimes seems like an opportunity can can actually turn into a threat <laughs> and it's how to avoid that I think it's quite important yeah thank you hello everyone else <laughs> Sally, can I ask, just ask what your, the name of your project was again? So our, we're known as FORK, um, F-O-R-K, but that's Friends of the River Kelvin. Okay, thank you. Um, so probably quite similar to um, in Edinburgh, you've got a uh, river group out at uh, Slateford, the Water of Leith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. similar to them, but not on that scale of having a Norman Foster design building or anything like that. So. Okay. Great. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story with us, Sally. Um, there are a few more people and we don't have a lot of time left, but um, there is... Sarah, did you want to say something as well? No? No reaction? No, thank you. It's all right. Thank you. It's, um, it's fine. Very interesting. But uh, not, not quite uh, our problem yet. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I can you guys hear me? Uh, maybe I can ask a, a question, Katrina. Is that Ryan? Yeah, it's Ryan. Hi, Ryan. Yeah, Hi. yeah, yeah sure, go ahead. Uh, sorry, I'm without video, but um, yeah, I'll just introduce myself. Uh, I'm from Scene Connect, and we're um, in Edinburgh. We're operating as a social enterprise, uh, working with community organisations to develop um, kind of feasibility studies and shared ownership opportunities for um, their own renewable energy assets. Um, so we're mostly working with energy as a whole. Well, the sound is not great on your end, Ryan. Don't know if you can. Oh, really? Can you hear me a little bit better now? Can you hear me a bit better now, or? Okay, just about. Okay, I'll try and speak up. Um, yeah, just saying that Scene is mostly working with um community groups to um develop them taking on ownership of renewable energy assets and providing feasibility studies and consultancy services. Um, but one thing that we find is that community groups aren't able to come to us because of a kind of lack of capacity within them. Um, and I would just be interested to kind of um, ask what Susie sort of asked in the group chat of um, like the level of support um, that would generally be available in terms of number of days and time um, from the Accelerate program if we were to because I feel like that's one of the questions we'd get asked if we were directing people across to accelerate. Um, I know you said the time scales are like normally three to six months. Um, just be interested to find out that. Okay. Um, again, there's no strict rule, but I actually can tell you that normally the health check part, that's um, um, level one, usually takes a day. There may be telephone conversations either side of that, but the actual, and, and, and the health check may be done on the telephone, though usually we like to go and actually visit people. So that would be our preferred option. So that's a day. If it then goes on to an action plan, the action plans that I've seen are usually between four and six days in terms of consultancy days that are, um, that are available. Um, so that, that's, that's a, a real average. So a day for the level one and usually between four and six days for the action plan to be delivered, Another, you know, the actual uh, implementation of the action plan. Okay, great. And just to, am I right in thinking that a kind of community energy um, would also be something appropriate for, for this scheme if we were to direct people who were in the first instance just at the very idea stage of, or, or maybe I'll, I'll, because there's some community groups who um, are already established in some different way but have seen kind of an opportunity for community energy um, as like a kind of side stream 
um, would that be appropriate to kind of direct them to the Accelerate programme? Yes, I, yes, I think it would be. Um, again, I, I, going back to are they trading or not, if, if this organisation was already significantly trading and this was like, if you like, a, um, a side um, enterprise, possibly not because no. as an organisation they would be trading. But if, um, if, if that was their, if, if um, community energy was the, um, was the objective, I, I, I don't see a problem there. It might be one where we do have to look at specialist um, consultancy. Um, again, we've, we would just have to find that out. But it sounds like it's quite specialist, in which case um, we might have to source a specialist consultant to deal with that. But if it was, um, you know, so gen generic support in terms of marketing, communication, um, uh, finance, that kind of thing, that would absolutely qualify. Okay, yeah, um, because sometimes the, the issue we find is that we we do provide that kind of specialist consultancy, All right. but, e but even getting community groups to the stage where they're able to start thinking about that is, um, th there's definitely a, a stage before that, um, but well, yeah. It's the stage before that that we're quite interested in, so that sounds like it would qualify. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Um, in that okay. case, I'll I'll maybe um, connect some people up um, and maybe get some applications in through that. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks so much for for sharing that and for asking that question, Ryan. Um, were there any more questions? There's a couple of people who haven't said anything. If there's nothing else, then um, I would just like to share with you some of the resources we also have on the on the scan side that I would recommend to you. And I'll I'll, I'll pop them here in the chat. So sorry if if the uh, image gets um, gets changed. Um, we have a um, funding route map. It's called for groups that are taking action on climate change. Um, you can find it on our website, but I'll I'll put the link right here in the chat for you as well. So you can also have a read through that. Um, that's a little bit more gen general. Um, it was prepared a few years ago, but it's it's still very much, um, you know, the, the gist and the idea of it is still very much um, um, of, of importance today and of relevance. Um, so if you would like to have a look at that, you're very welcome to do so as well. And um, then there is um, the SCVO, which also provides support on... Um, how to basically start trading and provide uh, support on that. Um, so just again, you know, for you to just have a resource of what you can use um, for for considering to going in the direction of trading, you can have a look at that as well. Um, so yeah, but I think this has been a really interesting conversation and thank you so much for everyone sharing your the the part of your journey that you are um that you are at um and it's been really interesting to hear from you amanda you know what you've already been able to achieve with this um now the program was previously called the enterprise accelerator wasn't it so possibly some people might know it under this name but it was rebaptized was it in 2019 wasn't it amanda well we did our own market research <laughs> and it seemed that people um uh, didn't mind the word accelerate but they didn't like the word enterprise so um that's why i think it was enterprise accelerator so it just became accelerate right okay. um, i just found that interesting myself mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't matter what it's called it, it's basically remained the, in terms of how it works it's, it's the same product and the program is still running for a few years does it have like yes a it is i mean again we suffer like um like your constituents do from funding and not knowing um, whether we're going to get funding for the next year. Mm. But um, it's funded up to the end of March this year, 31st March, and we, will, we are currently in conversation with the Scottish Government to have um, that funding renewed. Um, I know that we have, um, uh, we have capacity to take on a few more um, projects from, from the community groups. So my advice to your constituents would be to put in a, um, an inquiry form um, as, as soon as they're able to, uh, so that they can be included in the, this year's funding. Okay, that sounds great. So 
as as you've seen everyone so it's it's not it's really not an onerous um thing to apply for the accelerate support so if you do think that it could be of interest to you and there have been a couple of people who um, have clearly been already have already had the first seal of approval from a monday right here today um please don't hesitate and just just give it a uh, give it a shot um it's not a a lengthy and complicated process um it's really just about um putting in your application john you wanted to say something i just wanted to ask uh, because i missed the beginning i'm an, again sorry about that uh, and then so how do i do that um do i go online to get a form or how do i get yeah yes um you could go go on to the um scottish community alliance website right or um I, I, I don't know, Katarina, are you able to circulate if I were to give them to you to circulate the, the forms? Absolutely, yeah. Your... Um, what I what I would suggest doing um, that I wanted to do anyway, so I'll send around a follow-up email to everyone who's on the call today with your presentation, if that's okay, Amanda. That's fine. Yeah. And um, and then we can also circulate the actual inquiry form and and links to you know further information, um, just for people to have a bit of a yeah uh, you know a, a message um sort of a bit of content to to access some resources to to go back to and and follow this up on because obviously you know generating or starting to generate an income as an organization is not something you do in one day and it does need quite a bit of preparation and, and research as well so um any help that you can get on that knowing that a lot of people as we've heard already today is will come from the voluntary sector you know there is a lot of capacity that is needed and that needs to be developed so we're trying to support um everyone here um as much as we can as as scan um but of course we're not alone and that's why we have our partners from the scottish community alliance among others that are that are helping with with this kind of program so yes i will circulate that around um to everyone and if you have any questions um you can either direct them directly to amanda if it's directly concerning the accelerate program um or if you have any other questions that sort of relate to um to this to this webinar and uh, and the topic in more generally or if you indeed have any other good resources that you want to share so i can include them in the in the email around to uh, the follow-up email please send them over to me um, my email is info at scottish communities i'm just gonna pop that in the chat as well because it's quite a long one um, but it's basically spelled as you say it uh, info at scottish communities .uk. Um, and you can find me there doing and I'll be happy to to follow up on on any questions or any any input you may have and direct you further either to whoever might um, want to pick it up or um, answer the questions myself if I can. So with that, thank you very much to everyone to, for being on the call today. Thank you so much, Amanda, for um, guiding us through the interesting accelerate program, which I really hope that a lot of people are going to take advantage of. It's a really good support tool and. Um, and it's, it's, you know, since it's um, publicly funded, it, it doesn't do anything to 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 get it to use it. Um, it's not a, a fund a fund that you no. use, but it's a, almost like an in kind contribution. So it's yeah. something that you can access. It's knowledge, experience that you can um, um, access. So please do take advantage of it. It's all there. It's all there for you. So um, please do and do let us know about how you get on with it as well, um, so that we can. Um, you know, spread the spread the love and you know share the knowledge of how it's been working and hopefully accompany you further on your journey as well. So with that, thank you so much, and uh, we'll close for today, and we'll see you next month. Um, that will be the Tuesday Tuesdays for Climate session on uh, geography. Uh, so that's more about governance of community organisations. So um, if you're interested in that, that's more of a how can we include everyone, how can everyone's voice be heard in an organisation. Um, that's on Tuesday the 4th of February um, at 1.30pm. Um, so if you're interested in that, please sign up for that webinar as well. It's free to join and if you have any other questions, please get in touch with us. And see you next time. Thank you very much. Thank bye -bye. you and goodbye. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye.